While handing out flyers, I saw my girlfriend Alicia disheveled and passionately kissing the school hunk in a sports car. When I knocked on the window, the school hunk asked her, Who's this? Alicia, leaning against him, said, Just a simp. If you don't like it, I'll break up with him right away. After kissing the school hunk, she didn't even look at me and turned away. The school hunk licked his lips where my girlfriend had kissed and mocked. Leave. Beauties only belong to the strong. I asked. I don't care about my girlfriend, but why are you in my car? The atmosphere became awkward. The school hunk gripped the steering wheel, staring at me dumbfounded. What do you mean your car? This is my car, I said. I opened the glove compartment and took out the registration. Look, it has my name on it. Why are you in my car? Are you stealing it? I'll call the police right now. The school hunk turned red, hurriedly got out of the car, and whispered to me. Don't call the police. My dad's a mechanic. I saw this car looked nice and borrowed it for a spin. Please don't call the police. I widened my eyes and loudly said. You call this borrowing. This is theft. Can repair shops steal cars in for maintenance? The school hunk lowered his head and whispered. Bro, I'm sorry. I sighed. Don't get familiar. Let me check the car's condition first. He didn't dare speak. And I soon found a dent on the hood. I said angrily. What's this about? The school hunk panicked and quickly said. It's not my fault. Your girlfriend insisted on sitting on the hood to take selfies and posted a bunch of provocative photos on her moments. That's the evidence. I checked my phone and saw nothing. The school hunk quickly showed me his phone. It turned out Alicia had blocked me. Looking at her WeChat moments, I tooted. Such bold photos. Fine. You can go back. I'll keep these photos as evidence. You both prepare for a court summons. The school hunk was stunned and whispered. Bro, will it cost a lot? I said. About a hundred thousand. In an instant. His face turned pale. The school hunk hurriedly said, but it was her who damaged it. Do I have to pay too? I rolled my eyes. Don't you understand the law? You're both responsible. Your dad's work this year is for nothing. The proud school hunk burst into tears. That stupid girl. I told her this is carbon fiber. Only high-end sports cars have it. The hotter it gets, the harder it becomes. But she couldn't wait for the car to warm up and just sat on it for selfies. My parents work so hard. And now we're screwed because of her. Impatient. I got into my car and called someone to assess the damage. I wasn't interested in watching him cry. The school hunk wiped his tears and wailed. How come you're the rich one? Your girlfriend said you work multiple jobs handing out flyers. I said, I don't work. I hand out flyers, but those stores are mine. I wasn't lying. Half of the pedestrian street, 72 stores, my family owns them. Handing out flyers for my family's stores, what's wrong with that? I closed the car window, not wanting to hear the school hunks crying. At this moment. Alicia texted me, since you saw it, let's break up, don't blame me, blame your parents for being losers, I'd rather cry in a Lamborghini than laugh on your bicycle handing out flyers. I fell into deep thought, since both the Lamborghini and the bicycle are mine, should she cry or laugh? I wanted to reply, wait for the court summons, but Alicia had already blocked me, my god, how could she block me? Speaking of the repair costs, she owes me a hundred thousand. Ignoring the fact that it was the girl's dormitory. I rushed into the dormitory and headed straight to Alicia's room. Fortunately, it was morning, so there weren't many people in the dorm. I arrived at her dorm room door and was about to knock when I heard a woman inside ask, Did you really do what I told you? Then I heard Alicia say, Yes. I lied to him that I took the pill. The woman excitedly said, That's a great opportunity. I calculated your period and knew you were likely to get pregnant these two days, which is why I told you to go on a date. Once you're pregnant, you can marry into a wealthy family. Alicia said worriedly, what if he makes me get an abortion? The woman replied, As long as you're pregnant, I have ways to make him acknowledge the baby. You even broke up with your boyfriend for him. Let's see if he dares not to acknowledge it. I was really shocked that Alicia would go this far. She even wanted to marry the campus heartthrob by having his child. I wondered what her expression would be when she found out the heartthrob had stolen my car. I knocked on Alicia's door, and when she saw me, she immediately frowned. She said, I've already broken up with you. Why are you still pestering me? I'm telling you. Being poor is not a problem, but being poor and shamelessly pestering a girl is really disgusting. It seemed Alicia misunderstood, thinking I was there to win her back. There were two other people in the dorm, her roommates, whom I knew. Before I could speak, one of her roommates said, Can you stop hindering Alicia from pursuing her own happiness? I was completely dumbfounded. So, making out with another guy in a sports car behind her boyfriend's back was considered pursuing her own happiness. I knew this roommate. She was Alicia's best friend, Eva the one who had just urged Alicia to get pregnant. When I first started dating Alicia, she often made sarcastic remarks, saying things like a man's love for a girl depends on how much money he spends on her. Because of Eva's instigation, I had given Alicia many gifts. Now, I was here to get those gifts back, I said. 
We can break up, but the phone you are using is mine. You should return it to me. I didn't mention that the sports car was mine. Because, knowing Alicia's personality, she might shamelessly cling to me. I had to get my things back first. Alicia immediately frowned and said coldly, So you're such a petty person. Can't you consider my feelings? I was speechless. It's not that I'm petty, but you've already wronged me. Why should I care about your feelings? Eva suddenly covered her mouth and laughed. She said, Can't you see through this poor man's trick? Asking you to return the gift is a pretense. He really wants to make things difficult for you because he can't bear the breakup. Alicia sneered. So that's it. You think if I can't bear to return the gift, I won't break up with you, right? Have you forgotten? My current man is very rich. She raised her head proudly, and Eva added fuel to the fire. Don't be afraid, sis. I just checked. The heartthrob's Lamborghini costs millions. Buying you a new phone is nothing to him. Alicia laughed and said, I can return the phone, but let me make one last call. I'll show you why I broke up with you, because the gap between you and a rich man is so wide that you'll never bridge it in your lifetime. I wondered if the rich man she was talking about was the heartthrob. I remembered when I sent the car to the heartthrob's house for maintenance. His dad sighed and said making money was tough these days, and what they earned wasn't enough to pay the rent. Alicia made a call, and Eva quickly said, put it on speaker so he can hear. Let him know the gap between himself and others. Alicia nodded and, seemingly to show off, put the call on speaker. As soon as the call connected, she said pitifully, brother, my boyfriend came to break up with me and wants me to return the phone he bought me without the phone. How can I contact you in the future? However, the heartthrob didn't indulge her. On the other end of the line, the heartthrob yelled angrily, you damn bitch, don't let me see you again, or I'll beat you every time I see you. In an instant, both Alicia and Eva were stunned. The call was abruptly cut off, and Alicia stared at her phone. Unable to say a word, Eva quickly reacted. She angrily grabbed a book from her bed and threw it at me, shouting, Did you badmouth my best friend downstairs? When Alicia heard this, she was furious and started shaking. Yeah, he wasn't treating me like this before. You must have slandered me. How despicable and disgusting can you be? I impatiently said, I didn't badmouth you. Just give me back my things. If you didn't badmouth me, why would he suddenly treat me like this? I was speechless, because Alicia posted coquettish selfies sitting on the hood of his car. The heartthrob had ended up with thousands in debt, given his family's income. How could he not be angry? Eva sneered. That's why I told you to be brave and date the heartthrob, because I already saw through this poor loser. He only knows how to play tricks behind your back. Disgusting simp, I asked. So you're saying you were involved in her betrayal of me, right? Eva snapped. Betrayal. My best friend was stuck in a mess. Of course I had to pull her out. Should I let her sink into marrying you? She'll thank me for the rest of her life. Alicia grew impatient and said coldly, You can have the phone back, but I have one condition. You immediately apologize to the heartthrob and admit that you were lying about me. Eva cursed. Yeah, even if you have to kneel and apologize. Clear my best friend's name. I took the phone and continued. Why should I apologize for something I didn't do? And we haven't settled our accounts yet. I walked straight into the room and sat at the desk to start calculating. Throughout our relationship. I had given Alicia many gifts and transfers. I wanted them all back. Alicia said disappointedly. My friends are all here. We once loved each other. Do you really want to embarrass me like this? I ignored her and continued calculating. Eva suddenly took a photo of me. With a face full of disdain. She said. Today. I encountered the ultimate loser. I'm going to post this on my social media right now and expose you. So you'll be socially dead. I thought she was just threatening me. But when I took out my phone to check. I found she had actually posted it. She posted my photo with the caption, OMG, girls, never date a poor guy. The poorer they are, the more trouble they cause. My best friend got stuck with one. It's terrifying. I frowned and said, this is a personal matter between us. Why do you keep mentioning being poor? You might as well write gold digger on your face. Eva sneered. Yeah, I do like rich guys. Do you have the right to be jealous? If you were rich, you'd be the one scolding me now, not the other way around. Look at your pathetic self. Eva got more and more agitated. Walking to the window and pointing downstairs, she said, Rich men drive million-dollar Lamborghinis and are full of ambition and career goals. Poor losers just sit here calculating, making the girls who once loved them feel sick. Another roommate finally couldn't help but speak up. Alicia, why don't you just pay him back? This is your fault in the first place. In an instant, Alicia's expression changed. Alicia asked, What do you mean? Are you taking his side? Eva sneered, Isn't it obvious? You found a boyfriend with a Lamborghini. And she's jealous, so she purposely insults you, slanders you. The roommate's face turned red with anger. Don't falsely accuse me. I knew this girl. She was a poor student named Lisa. Before, when Alicia wanted to show off, 
She had me buy desserts for everyone in her dorm, but Lisa refused to take them, saying she couldn't accept something she didn't earn, because of that, I had a deep impression of her. Alicia sighed and said, Lisa, I know you're poor and rely on student loans and scholarships to study. I understand if you resent the rich, but you know what? Being a good person is more important than good grades. Lisa's eyes widened in disbelief. Are you saying I'm not a good person? I was completely dumbfounded. Lisa was diligent and hardworking, excelling in both character and academics. And Alicia, she had just been making out with the rich guy in a car, right in front of me, her boyfriend. She dared to say Lisa didn't know how to behave. What kind of nonsense was she spouting? Eva sneered. I know your type. Poor simp girl. You know he broke up. So you're pretending to be a pretentious coquette to win his favor. You know you have no chance with a guy who drives a Lamborghini. So you don't even let a guy who earns 3,000 a month handing out flyers pass. Lisa was so angry she clenched her fists and stood up. I also work part-time as a tutor. And I earn 2,000 a month. Eva looked at her with disdain. To you. Even mosquito legs are meat. Yesterday. I saw you picking up food that fell on the table to eat. You poor wretch. Of course. You're not picky about men. Lisa's eyes reddened immediately. Her voice trembling with grievance. The food fell on the table. Not the floor. What's so poor about that? Enough. Alicia's shout interrupted us. She slammed her phone on the table and said to me. You really embarrass me. My biggest regret is dating you. Hurry up and settle our accounts. Then I can go explain to my new boyfriend. Eva quickly said. Don't be afraid. Sis, I'll go with you to explain. The rumors will be quashed, and you'll still be the little darling of a rich man. I couldn't be bothered with these two anymore and focused on calculating our accounts. Of course, I didn't include the repair costs of the sports car. I was afraid Alicia might shamelessly try to reconcile with me. In the end, I figured it out. In the year we dated, I had given Alicia gifts and transfers totaling 18,000. After doing the math, I was stunned. Dating really costs a lot of money. I only spent a few hundred a month on living expenses. I didn't realize it until I calculated it. Not only was I shocked, but Alicia and Eva were also a bit stunned. After all, they were students. Where would they get over 10,000? At first, they didn't believe it. But after checking several times, they finally confirmed my calculations were correct. Alicia looked a bit troubled. 18,000. I can't come up with that right now. Eva panicked and quickly said, Don't be scared, sis. I'll help you pay it back. Your attitude towards this loser now will determine how the heartthrob sees you. Even if we have to borrow from loan sharks, we'll pay the money back. You need to cut ties with this poor guy to have a chance to marry into a wealthy family. Alicia was eventually swayed by Eva's words. She nodded and said, Okay, we'll find a way to borrow it. My family mustn't know, or my parents will kill me. I didn't know what to say. If 18,000 would get her killed, what would happen when the nearly 100,000 repair bill for the sports car got sent to her house? Her parents would probably want to grind her bones to dust. Alicia and Eva immediately started contacting people to borrow money. Surprisingly, it was quite easy for them to borrow money. Classmates each gave a few hundred lending it to Alicia. Even Alicia was amazed at how easily she could get the money. She couldn't help but say, I have a good reputation. Everyone is willing to lend me money. Eva laughed. It's because of your selfies on social media. You're sitting in a sports car worth millions. Of course, people are willing to lend you this small amount of money. Alicia suddenly realized. She glanced at me and said, Do you see that? That's the true charm of a real man. Making everyone admire him and lend me money, hoping to befriend him. If I were still with you, would anyone reach out to help me when I'm in trouble? Eva sneered. Trouble. Being with him is already the biggest disaster in life. They kept borrowing money and finally managed to collect over 8,000. But there was still a 10,000 gap. Eva gritted her teeth and said, I know a guy from the underworld. He can lend me the money, but if we can't pay it back, it'll be terrible. Alicia asked worriedly. What happens if we can't pay it back? Eva replied, Don't worry about that for now. Your new boyfriend is so rich. 10,000 is nothing to him. Eva quickly contacted the so-called underworld person, who appeared to be a professional private lender. He handed over 10,000 without hesitation. After they managed to gather enough money and returned it to me, Alicia threw the phone at me angrily and said, Satisfied now. Get lost. From now on, we should have nothing to do with each other. I nodded and turned to Lisa, saying, Can you come out with me for a moment? Lisa looked at me in surprise, seemingly not understanding why I was calling her. Eva immediately sneered. I knew these two had something going on. As soon as you paid him back, they hooked up. I felt a wave of helplessness. The reason I wanted to talk to Lisa was that she worked in the student council and had the contact directory. Since I planned to send a court summons to Alicia's family, I definitely needed her home address. Lisa blushed deeply, lowered her head, and followed me out. Eva mocked again. You're really following him out. You only deserve Alicia's leftovers. 
Lisa was almost in tears. I don't have any such intentions. Eva cursed. Pretentious coquette. Keep pretending. No wonder your family is so poor. It's genetic. Look at you trying to please even a guy who hands out flyers. You're so undiscriminating. It's clear what kind of people your parents are. Alicia looked at us with disdain and sneered. Good thing I broke up with him. This useless man is all yours. Let me give you a word of advice. A whore and a dog. May they last forever. I led Lisa out of the dormitory and into the hallway. Lisa whispered. I only spoke up because I was angry. Don't read too much into it. I just want to study hard. I don't have the intentions they said. I nodded. I know. You have to get scholarships and work as a tutor. You don't have time for romance. Lisa asked curiously. Then why did you ask me to come out? I said. I know you have the contact directory. Can you give me Alicia's home address? Lisa immediately panicked. What do you plan to do? Don't do anything reckless. She seemed very worried and even grabbed my hand in her anxiety. Lisa looked into my eyes and said seriously, we may be poor, but we have dignity. Others are at fault, but don't ruin your future because of their mistakes. The atmosphere grew silent, and I didn't know how to respond. Did this girl think I was planning to go down with Alicia's family? Lisa then realized she had grabbed my hand in her haste. She quickly let go, blushing. You're hardworking and determined. You deserve a better life. I believe that in 10 years, Alicia will regret her choices. I said. It won't take 10 years. I've already had the dealership assess the damage. If her family lives in the city, she'll regret it soon. Lisa was stunned and asked what I meant. I said the sports car downstairs was mine. She stared at me, dumbfounded. I explained everything to Lisa. She was speechless again. It wasn't until I showed her the car registration that she believed it was true. When Lisa went to get the contact directory, she walked as if in a daze, probably thinking she was dreaming. Soon, she sent me Alicia's home address. Surprisingly, it was just a few kilometers from the dealership. What a coincidence, right? I called the dealership, and they told me they'd deliver the damage assessment within 10 minutes. Wait, I suddenly remembered. Alicia had given me back her phone. How would I contact her for debt collection later? I decided to temporarily return the phone to her. I went back to Alicia's dormitory. When she saw me return, she asked irritably, Why are you back? I said, I know you don't have a phone. You can borrow this for a couple of days. Eva immediately clutched her chest, pretending to retch. I'm going to puke. I was right. This simp is doing it on purpose. Trying to play this on again. Off again game with you. Alicia snapped. Do you really take me for a fool? Can you stop pestering me? You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Just then. Eva's phone rang. Eva took out her phone and said puzzled. Alicia, why are your parents calling me? I was taken aback. The dealership works fast. It seemed Alicia's parents couldn't reach her, so they contacted Eva. Alicia took the phone and asked, Mom, what's wrong? This time, Alicia didn't put the call on speaker, but her mother's yelling was loud and clear, Don't call me Mom. Do you know how much your father and I make? You've ruined us. The sudden scolding left Alicia stunned. She quickly said, Mom, what did I do? Alicia walked to the corner of the dormitory with her phone. As she talked, she suddenly burst into tears. Eva hurriedly asked, Sis, what's wrong? Alicia sobbed. I know why the heartthrob suddenly got mad at me. I dented his car by sitting on it, and now he wants my family to pay. The estimated cost is 137,000. Where is my family going to get that kind of money? Eva was equally stunned. How is that possible? Just by sitting on it, it got dented. The bill was delivered to my house. My mom said she took a picture of it and sent it to me. She told me to check my phone. Alicia couldn't even stand. She sat down on the bed in a daze. Eva bit her lip and said, Don't panic. I might have a solution. Alicia asked, What can you do? Eva said, At this point, we need to see if you're pregnant. If you are, and you're carrying his child, would he really dare to ask you for the repair costs? Alicia immediately nodded. Right. Even if he doesn't care about me, he has to care about the baby. Right. Eva said excitedly. If he dares to ask you for the repair costs, go make a scene at his house. Alicia sighed deeply. I initially wanted to use the baby to marry into a wealthy family who knew it would only end up covering repair costs. Eva consoled her. Hundreds of thousands of isn't a small amount. Your parents would need two years to earn that. And who says you can't marry into a wealthy family? Maybe his parents will insist on you getting married. And not only will they cover the repair costs, but they might even gift you a car. I wondered if I should remind Alicia out of past affection about her getting pregnant with the heartthrob's child. It certainly wouldn't exempt her from the repair costs. I started to speak, um, but before I could say anything, Alicia shot me a venomous look. She walked over, snatched the phone from me, and said, don't say a word, get lost, I don't want to hear your voice, I'm already in a bad mood. Eva also snapped impatiently, yeah, can you get lost? We're trying to figure out how to calm the heartthrob down. I awkwardly said, 
How about you read the documents first? Eva yelled at me. Get lost, loser. We have nothing to talk to you about. If you keep pestering Alicia, we'll accuse you of harassment and see you in court. I nodded. Since she said that, fine. After all, we were going to see each other in court anyway. Alicia had already picked up her phone and sent a voice message to the heartthrob. Please, come downstairs to my dorm. I want to talk to you. Please. The heartthrob quickly replied. And she played the voice message. I heard the heartthrob's voice. Sure, you slut. I want to talk to you too. Come down now. Alicia put down her phone and worriedly asked Eva. With that attitude, will he really forgive me? Eva said. Go down and beg him. I'll go with you. Eva helped Alicia up and glared at me. Get out of the way. I ignored her and turned to leave the dormitory. Just as I was about to go downstairs, Lisa returned. Alicia and Eva walked past Lisa, heading in front of us, seeing me. Lisa quietly asked, will you make Alicia pay a lot of money? I said, I won't extort her. She should pay what she owes, but I'm thinking. Lisa asked, thinking what? I said, it seems like they're begging the wrong person. Won't it be awkward? When we got downstairs, the heartthrob was already there. The most noticeable thing was the slap mark on his face. He was standing by the roadside, crying and wiping his tears. If I'm not mistaken, he must have told his dad about what happened and received some fatherly love. Alicia and Eva were dumbfounded at the sight. Eva said, seriously, with all the money his family has, he needs to cry like this. Alicia said, maybe he really loves that car. When I went on dates with him, he always took great care to protect it. Eva sighed. They say a car is a man's second wife. It must be true. I rolled my eyes. I don't treat my car like a wife. And why wouldn't he protect it? It's my car. Alicia quickly approached him, looking pitiful. Baby, let me explain. Explain to your grandfather. You bitch. The heartthrob finally couldn't hold back his frustration. He rushed forward, grabbed Alicia's hair, and slapped her hard across the face. Neither Alicia nor Eva expected the heartthrob to hit her. Eva hurried over to try to break it up. While Alicia, feeling wronged, said, baby, hit me if you're upset, it's my fault, I'll never do it again, can I make it up to you for the rest of my life, I don't need your compensation, the heartthrob was so angry he started punching Alicia in the face, as he continued hitting her, both Alicia and Eva realized something was seriously wrong, the students watching were all shocked, just a moment ago, Alicia was stepping out of a sports car, admired by everyone, now, in front of all these people, she was being beaten by the heartthrob, who had her by the hair, punching her face repeatedly. Eva shouted anxiously, you're hitting her too hard, she's a girl. The heartthrob hit so hard he knocked out one of Alicia's front teeth. Alicia, missing a tooth, covered her mouth in disbelief and spit out some blood. She quickly bent down to pick up the tooth, crying out, stop hitting me, my tooth is knocked out. Eva, go get some milk. I nodded and said, smart, if you put a knocked out tooth in milk quickly, there's a chance it can be reattached. Lisa turned to me, saying incredulously, are you taking pleasure in this? I said. How could I? We were in love once. Seeing her like this makes me sad too. Lisa asked. Then why are you smiling? I said. I'm just naturally cheerful. People who smile often tend to have good luck. During this beating, Alicia finally remembered me. Covering her mouth, Alicia cried out to me. You're really not a man. Look at how badly I've been beaten. And you still won't help me. I replied seriously. You just told me not to harass you. Or we'd meet in court. The heartthrob who seemed overwhelmed earlier, finally noticed me when I spoke. He let go of Alicia and walked toward me. Eva quickly said, Heartthrob, I know you're upset, but do you know how much Alicia has suffered for you, just now? This loser was bullying her. If she didn't love you so much, would she have put up with this? The heartthrob angrily shouted, Shut up, your whole family are losers. Eva didn't dare say another word. It was strange. She had been so aggressive in front of me, but now, facing her rich idol, she was unusually obedient. The heartthrob stood in front of me. I wondered how he would apologize. But then he did something unexpected. In front of everyone, he suddenly knelt down, with tears in his eyes. He cried, bro, I'm sorry, please forgive me. At that moment, the world seemed to fall silent. Everyone stared at me in shock. The students were dumbfounded. Eva trembled with disbelief. Lisa said nothing, keeping her head down. Alicia, covering her mouth where a tooth was missing, suddenly had blood streaming from her nose. She tried to sniff it back but ended up choking on it and coughed painfully. No one expected things to turn out this way. Honestly, even I hadn't expected it. I sighed and said, if you'd known this would happen, why did you do it in the first place? Eva asked in a daze, why are you apologizing to him? I said softly, yes, tell everyone why you're apologizing to me. The heartthrob, still crying, said, I shouldn't have stolen your car to show off. I shouldn't have stolen your girlfriend. I'm despicable and disgusting. 
Please forgive me, I told my dad. But he said our family is already struggling with rent and can't pay for the damages. I nodded and said, your dad works really hard. That's why I sent my car to your family's repair shop. Who would have thought that such a diligent mechanic would raise a son like you? The heartthrob broke down. I'll never do it again. If you can give us more time to pay, I'll do anything you ask. Alicia was stunned. She muttered, what repair shop? What car maintenance? What stealing a car? I said, the facts are right in front of you. Alicia pointed at the sports car, her voice trembling. That car is yours. I nodded. Yes, it's my car. Her expression froze. Then her lips quivered as she burst into tears. How can you be the rich one? Weren't you the flyer guy? I do hand out flyers, but those are all for my shops. Ignoring her bleeding nose and missing tooth, Alicia hurried to my side, limping. She grabbed my arm, crying. Baby, let me explain. I said coldly, I'm not your baby. We're already broken up. I reached out and placed my hand on the heartthrob's shoulder. He swallowed hard, looking at me pleadingly. I said, this is your fault, not your dad's. In fact, I should thank you because you showed me my girlfriend's true colors. You helped me, so I'll help you this once. I thought for a moment and continued, you'll graduate next year. You can negotiate the compensation amount, and once you start earning, I'll allow you to pay it back over three years. The heartthrob, surprised, asked, really? I nodded and said, yes, it's your mistake. Not your father's to pay for, but knocking out her front tooth is going to cost you a lot. The heartthrob said viciously, I'm not paying a cent. At worst, I'll go to jail and get a record. Anyway, I won't pass any civil service exams. I asked, are you really willing to go to jail rather than pay her a cent? The heartthrob replied, yes, this bitch doesn't deserve my compensation. I patted his shoulder hard and laughed. See, now you're being sensible. I'll wave a thousand as a reward. Alicia was already dumbfounded. She whimpered baby, I was really wrong, can you give me another chance, it's all, it's all, she turned around quickly and pointed at Eva, cursing, it's all because of this bitch, Eva didn't respond, her face blank, Alicia cried, you told me to do this, I loved my boyfriend so much, why did I fall for your tricks, I was tired of watching her drama, I said, remember to take the morning after pill, don't actually get pregnant, it's not because I care about you, but because I know with your personality, you'd definitely have an abortion if you got pregnant. I don't want an innocent life to be killed before it even sees the world because of your bad character. At that moment, Alicia's face turned ashen. Eva suddenly started crying. She said, are you not going to repay the money I just helped you borrow? Alicia completely turned on her. You caused all this misery. Why should I pay you back? Eva also broke down in tears. I have to repay that money, or I'll be beaten to death. I casually said, if you're afraid of owing money to a loan shark, then just pay it back. Eva cried again. Where am I supposed to get 10,000? Lisa clenched her fists in anger. She said furiously, you mock me for eating food off the table, but your own family doesn't even have 10,000. You're poor too. So why do you bully other poor people? You deserve this. Eva sat on the ground, sobbing uncontrollably. I smiled at Alicia and said, goodbye. Unless it's about repaying money, don't contact me. Otherwise, I'll charge you with harassment. I turned to Lisa and asked, since the bitch has been punished, how about we go have a meal to celebrate? You can ride in my car. Lisa replied, are you drunk in broad daylight? Why would I get in your car or have a meal with you? Realizing she had a point, I awkwardly scratched my nose. I got into my sports car and drove off. Alicia and the heartthrob's family quickly reached an agreement, with both families paying half. It's said that Alicia was beaten half to death by her parents at home, even having her leg broken. It really was broken. She had to wear a cast. The worst part was that her leg didn't heal properly. She walked with a limp and might have to break it again to heal correctly. Feeling too ashamed, she didn't return for the last year of college. Eva, on the other hand, did return. But every time she did, people mocked her, calling her a traitor to the poor. To pay back the loan shark, Eva tried desperately to find a job, but her reputation preceded her, and no one wanted to hire her. In the end, she found me, begging for a job. I happened to have a few low-end restaurants. So I had her clean the toilets. She had looked down on the poor. So now she could clean toilets for them. She could only cry while scrubbing the toilets. And word spread about her situation. Some students even came specifically to use the toilet after she cleaned it. Just to make her clean it again. After dropping out, Alicia frequently messaged me, begging to get back together. I blocked her. But she would just switch numbers and continue to harass me. Eventually, I did as she wished and sued her. That finally scared her off. And she stopped contacting me. As for Lisa and me. Nothing happened between us. She was a self-reliant and disciplined girl, different from Alicia and her crowd. During the last year of college, Lisa didn't contact me at all. After graduation, she went back to her hometown to teach, 
She said there were many poor children in her hometown, and she wanted to help them. I admired her character and reached out to her a few times, but she wasn't interested in dating. The only time she asked for my help was to see if I could organize a clothing drive for the children in her area. I donated some old clothes, and after that, we didn't stay in touch. I often think about what she said, about having dignity, that remarkable girl. I hope her life takes her far.